Looking back at 2012, one of my favorite trends of the year was the number of really great open world games, and not just GTA clones. There were games from all kinds of genres that had these really interesting ideas about the types of things you can do in a sandbox environment. Here are some of my favorite ones from the past year. First up, there's Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3's setting is this beautiful tropical island full of beaches, palm trees, and breathtaking sunsets. But besides being pretty, it's also home to a fierce and unforgiving food chain of wild animals. And as anybody who's played Far Cry 3 knows, the player isn't always at the top of the food chain. And that's one of the things that makes Far Cry 3 so exciting. No matter where you go exploring, you really feel like you're part of this dynamic ecosystem of hunters and hunted. At any moment, you could go from stalking an enemy pirate to getting mauled to death by some monstrous animal that snuck up behind you from absolutely nowhere. It really keeps you on your toes and creates this sort of ambient danger that few first-person shooters have. Next up, there's Forza Horizon. Sure, there's been a lot of really great open-world racing games over the years, like Burnout Paradise and Test Drive Unlimited, but fans of simulation racing physics have always been left to wonder, what would driving a real car feel like in this type of sandbox? Well, Forza Horizon answers that question, and it answers it extremely well. It's so much fun to go cruising through the mountain highways of Colorado in a $200,000 sports car that actually feels like a $200,000 sports car. It's a game that proves that realistic driving physics don't have to be a burden. In fact, they can add to the fun and immersion of a fully open world. Next up, there's Sleeping Dogs. Of all the open world action games released last year, Sleeping Dogs is probably the one you can most easily peg as a GTA clone. But unlike GTA, Sleeping Dogs has this crazy idea about combat in an open world action game. The idea goes something like this. What if you made hand-to-hand -hand combat not suck? Okay, so that's a bit of an understatement. The hand-to-hand -hand combat in Sleeping Dogs doesn't just not suck, it also happens to be pretty awesome. It's fluid, it's responsive, and those gruesome environmental kills just never get old. Combine it with the terrific atmosphere of Hong Kong, and the whole thing just feels like your own personal martial arts movie. And finally, we have DayZ. One of the coolest things about DayZ isn't what it does, it's what it doesn't do. This is an open world game with no goals or structure to speak of. It's just you, a massive open landscape, and a whole bunch of threats to your survival. What you do from there is up to you. And that's what makes DayZ so much fun. It turns the whole game into one big psychology experiment with all these fascinating interactions between players. You never know who's going to befriend you or kill you for a can of beans. I'd love to see that sort of blank slate multiplayer approach applied to other open world action games in the future. Just uh, as long as they're not the War Z. Anyways, what do you think? What were some of your favorite features from open world games of the past year? Let us know in the comments.